So we're now going to hear from uh, Professor Jane Seymour, who is Professor of Palliative and End-of-Life Care at the University of Sheffield. And Jane joined the University of Sheffield in 2016 after a decade leading a palliative care research centre at the University of Nottingham. Jane is currently involved with colleagues in establishing a programme of work within a five-year strategic research alliance between the Royal College of Nursing and the University of Sheffield. In her work, Jane seeks to enable the capacity of nurses and other healthcare professionals to participate in research and has published widely across the nursing, healthcare and specialist palliative care journals. I had the great pleasure of working with Jane and other colleagues from across Europe when we developed a definition of recommendations for advanced care planning. The outcome of this work was a paper that we had published in the Lancet Oncology in the latter half of last year. So the focus of Jane's presentation today will be the nursing contribution to integrated palliative care, bearing in mind that the programme of education we're celebrating 21 years of started its life as a nursing programme and has progressed to an integrated and interdisciplinary programme. Thanks, Jane. Thanks very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, and it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And Congratulations everyone who's taken part in the program, either as a student or has led the program. It's a fantastic achievement to reach 21 years. And I've been involved in a number of postgraduate programs that have fallen by the wayside long before 21 years. So, so it really is a great achievement. Um, it's okay, so... Um, I, I want to acknowledge colleagues at the University of Sheffield, but also from the University of Nottingham, because I'm going to be drawing on some of the research that we've done over the years in this talk. And I'm also drawing a little bit on um, a project in Canada that I was involved in in 2016, and that was a consensus development project called the Canadian Palliative Care Matters. And I hope that some of the references that I give you from that exercise may be useful, and they certainly speak to some of the things that we've already raised in the in the lectures so far. But it's a marvellous place to be in 2018 and to realise that actually the principles of palliative care, which you will all recognise from this slide, are subject to broad agreement internationally. I think one of the things that we probably would like to give to others outside of the palliative care field is the dual mission of palliative care, both as a Hippocratic orientation and an Asclepian orientation. So what do I mean by that? I mean, the Hippocratic focuses on quality of life, it focuses on doing for, prescribing, acting, all of the things that Claudia was talking about. Asclepian means creating a space for healing, being with, and accompanying people. And I was privileged to be at a lecture in 2003 given by Balfour Mount. Balfour Mount was an oncologist working in Toronto in Canada, and he was the very first person that coined the term palliative care in relation to care of people with life-limiting illness and care of the dying. And what he said was that you can never achieve that mission of palliative care on your own. No one single prof profession can achieve that. So what we need is a team. But uh, what I'm going to argue in this talk is that the vital contribution of nursing has been somewhat neglected, partly because of historical reasons, partly because of a power dynamic, and par partly because it's terribly difficult to describe and articulate what it is that nurses do. So... I'm going to speak very briefly about the illustrious history of hospice, which started right here in Dublin. And then I'm going to try and look at the nursing role in palliative care, some research and evidence about that, and then demonstrate to you that nursing is absolutely essential in excellent team practices of palliative care. And that sort of tripartite relationship between the different elements of nursing can be seen very clearly in an evaluation I was involved in back in the late 90s. It was a national evaluation of Macmillan nursing. We found it incredibly difficult to do. We were able to recruit 76 patients. 
from 12 different services and we followed them longitudinally. And we used some hard outcome measures. We also used the sort of gold standard qualitative interview. But then we asked experts, what would have happened if the Macmillan nurse hadn't been involved in their care? And what we found was that actually Macmillan nurses, even if the patients weren't aware that a Macmillan nurse had been involved in their care, stopped bad things from happening. So there was an awful lot of negative outcomes. Uh, but we found other positive outcomes which were directly attributable to the care of Macmillan nurses, and you can see them down here. There were one or two negative outcomes. Some patients were horrified that they'd been referred to a Macmillan nurse. And some were confused. Who is this person? It was just another professional in a raft of busy visits. Since then, um, and in the last year, I have led a project, and again, I, I seem to get involved in these complex, difficult projects, where we tried to turn it around a bit. So we said, there's an awful lot of clinical nurse specialists out there. They don't have palliative care in their title, but they do have a vital role in the care of patients with palliative care needs. How can we operationalize those patients with palliative care needs? We used an American definition of palliative care needs, and then we tried to find all the research where you could arguably say those patients had palliative care needs and they were receiving some sort of intervention from clinical nurse specialists. And we found 79 pieces of research to include internationally. Um, and the headline findings were, well, first of all, there was an awful lot of methodological problems because the clinical nurse specialist interventions were described very poorly just as support or you know, a clinical nurse specialist intervention. So they were, there was a problem with the way they were described. But what we found was that these nurses have the potential to provide as good a quality care as their medical colleagues at neutral or lower costs. And that we recommended that healthcare systems should build clinical nurse specialist interventions in to their policies to integrate palliative care. It's terrifically important. But these clinical nurse specialists, many of them don't receive any formal training in palliative care. So you can see the need to close the circle there. Okay, so I'll um, move on a little bit now. There was one more thing that I wanted to say about that, but I've forgotten, forgotten it. Ah, I know what it was. We also did a parallel qualitative review of all the research that we could find about what patients and carers said about clinical nurse specialists. And of course, alongside the hard outcomes, patients and carers valued the practical, informational, pain and symptom control, but most of all, they valued the care coordination and having somebody to help them navigate their way through care systems. And it's no surprise that when you try to identify what it is that programs of palliative care support do, that the role of nurses is crucially important. In many of these programs, it is nurses who are doing the work because, you know, there's more of them than anybody else. This is one of the Canadian papers that I want to draw your attention to. And it's from... Um, a chap called Sin Xiao from Canada in Toronto. And what they did was that they studied 11 effective community specialist palliative care teams. And they were seen as clinically effective because they achieved a 50% reduction in late life hospital use and death, as well as providing good care as rated by the staff that were involved in those teams and the patients. And they used mixed methods to evaluate what those community teams did. And the paper there um, provides you with the references. And what they found was that these 11 effective community specialist teams were all configured in different ways. But when you drilled it down, 
they, did, they had seven essential elements, which are just here. And what Sin Sao says is, don't worry too much about protocols or processes or pathways or anything else. Focus on team building, which allows these things to be developed. And adapt what you have in your culture and in your context until you can say that this, this is occurring. Um, I haven't got time to go into the detail, but they subsequently went on to do a much larger review, which was published in December in the Journal of Palliative Medicine. And they really emphasised the importance of team building um, to achieve this excellent palliative care. And actually, the work from Canada provides an explanatory framework for why this model, with a number of caveats, seems to have been successful in the UK. And my colleague Bridget Johnston led an evaluation team, and I was involved in that evaluation team. Terrifically difficult evaluation to do because we, there were six sites and they all did different things. But again, what they did was that they employed four principles, early referral, home-based clinical care, collaboration of service providers, and flexible team working between specialists and generalists. And what the Macmillan investment appeared to have done was allow that all-important team building to flourish. And I'm just giving you one little quote here from a patient who we interviewed. I had the feeling it was all superbly coordinated. It gave me the reassurance that people were looking after, who were looking after my interests were working as a team. And that work is about to come out in BMC palliative care and palliative medicine. All sorts of caveats, but I think flexibility, finding the important elements and working as a team, there seems to be something there about what works. And nursing is centrally involved there. I've got a few more slides, and I'm going to say just a little bit about preparing all nurses to deliver high-quality palliative care, what is needed. And again, in Canada, um, I think there was a very important piece of work that was presented, and it was a review of educational resources to help nurses and unregulated care providers of nursing care, and it was by Barbara Pisuit and Grieg, I, I don't know who, what Grieg's Christian name is. And what they said is that we need educational resources for all the competencies, but at the moment there are huge gaps around the palliative care approach. But what we also need is that we need competencies that can be incorporated into appropriate curricula, and that's a gap too. And then, as Claudia has already said, we need much more evidence about the relationship between education and training and practice. We also need to recognise that palliative care needs to be an early intervention modality, as well as a modality of care to help people in the last stages of life. We need to be able to adapt it to a variety of life-limiting conditions. And that might mean that we give palliative care to other disciplines, or we engage in dual training, for example. And we need to be able to adapt it as well to a variety of care contexts in care homes, in the community, in patients' homes, as well as, of course, as in hospitals. And uh, you'd be delighted to know that Barbara stood up in Canada and it was filmed for the TV and it was on radio and everything else, and she specifically mentioned your competency framework as being a leader in the field. And I know that you collaborated with the EAPC, so the work that you've done has been seen as very, very important. And I started to use it a little bit when engaging in my teaching with student nurses 
and I've sent it to colleagues um, who are engaged in teaching, and, and, and everybody finds it extremely valuable. And you can give those competencies to student nurses, and it's fascinating to listen to them, to talking about them. One of the things that Barbara <laughs> did in the review was that she looked at all the research that she could find to see what the positive impact might be of education in palliative care for nurses. And it will be no surprise to know that actually there was a short-term effect on nurses' stress. If you don't know what you're doing and you provide education, then stress levels tend to drop. There was some effect on nurses' communication, attitude and knowledge and confidence, moderate effects. And then there were small effects on nurses' anxiety, particularly in the workplace. But unfortunately, no education in the world can change the context in which you're trying to practice. And, as Claudia has already said, one of the things that the, the, the review identified is that mentorship and real-world learning, even if it's simulated, is terrifically important. What we don't know, and again, it's already been said, is how do people translate their education into practice? And one of my own PhD students tried to get an insight into this in Cameroon, a terrifically resource-poor country in the third world. She's a leading... A nurse teacher there and using ready, readily available resources she created a one-week basic course in an introduction to palliative care for student nurses at the University of Buea in Cameroon and she was able to incorporate it into the general curriculum and I think 64 nurses students followed that course and afterwards, after they'd gone back into practice, she was able to get 23 of them to engage in critical incident interviews and focus groups. So they had this opportunity to, to discuss what they did with their teaching. And what she found was that many of them, or all of them, <coughs> were able to describe ways in which they had been able to implement the palliative care approach in their teaching. But there were, of course, all sorts of barriers and one of the major barriers wa was other staff. And there's a quote here from a student nurses. What I know about palliative care, they, the qualified staff, know little or nothing. It's as if I also transfer the knowledge to them or teach them also so that we can care for these patients. And I think that's a lovely quote and it captures the problem doesn't it? Not just in Cameroon, of course. I'm just going to say now just a few words about nursing workforce. We're very exercised by this in England, and it's hugely worrying. And I, I, I'm not quite sure where I got this infographic from. I think I got it from a health select committee. But let's just have a look at a couple of the details. So you can he see here that in community services, which of course is where we want to care for most patients, there's been a drop by 11%. And I think this is since about 2010. There's been an 11% increase. And the numbers weren't very big to begin with in England. So that's really very worrying. Where are those people going to come from? Why has there been such a huge decrease? And then, thinking back to the notion that we need to all work as a team, there's been a fundamental neglect of nurses alongside the other professions. And yet we know that nurses do the work. So this is a problem. There's only been a 1% increase across the board. And... You'll be glad to know that a health committee in England has just reported on the problems in nursing workforce. And this is a slide, this is a slide from a graph that they published in there. And you'll be glad to see that Ireland comes out of it pretty well. 
in terms of numbers of nurses per thousand of population. Poor old, poor old UK is falling down the slide, and that's going to get worse, I think, with Brexit. We have probably 30% less nurses per thousand population than you do. So this is very worrying. One of the places where we have a real problem is in care homes, where we have a very ambiguous relationship about nursing and these highly complex patients who require palliative care. I could talk a lot about that, but I don't have time. We need a minimum staffing level for safety, basic safety, not just palliative care, basic safety and quality of care. The trouble is that NICE, the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, stopped short of issuing um, minimum safety standards because they said the research around safe staffing wasn't of adequate quality. I would take some issue with that. I think there's a huge body of research showing that there's an inextricable, inextricable link between staffing and quality of care and safety of care. Um, and it's good to see, I've already mentioned this health committee report, so there's beginning to be some boil up of this issue. And this quote actually comes from Sir Robert Francis, who led the inquiry into the Staffordshire NHS, NHS scandal a few years ago. Um, I really love what he says here. Nurses are the glue that keeps together delivery of the service to patients. If you do not have sufficient numbers of caring and compassionate nurses, and remember I said compassion, is hugely constrained at the moment. The patient and perhaps their relatives begin to suffer. Patients who cannot care for themselves in the bo most basic ways are left uncared for. And just as an aside, I've just finished uh, putting together, it's taken me about four years of work, a paper which tries to get to grips with why the Liverpool care pathway failed. And one of the reasons it's failed was because I think there was a tendency to believe that if you just threw that out there, it would do its magic. Well, it didn't do its magic because we ignored the context in which people were using it. Nothing wrong with the Liverpool Care Pathway per se. The context in which it was used was wrong. And people didn't have the attitudes or the principles with which to use it safely. So that's a bit of a quick cook's tour of a subject, isn't it? And I put to you that nursing and palliative care are inextricably linked, cannot have one without the other. They have a completely fascinating history and we should be very, very proud of that. And you in Dublin, most of all. We're, we're approaching a time in palliative care where we have to change and think critically about what we do. Um, and we are going to have to change because there's a moral imperative to meet the changing needs of patients, and they're not the patients that they used to be. And nursing across the board, whether you're a general nurse or one of these specialist nurses, has the potential to advocate for developments towards integrated palliative care. But unfortunately, at the moment, we have a problem in that our health systems do not appear willing to invest in nursing. And I think that's, that's a political issue, to be honest. I'm going to leave you there. Um, but thank you very much for listening.